Today we explore the twilight of a true aviation icon, the Harrier jump jet. A marvel of British engineering, the Harrier's vertical and short takeoff and landing capability allowed it to operate from small ships and improvised bases, giving it unmatched tactical flexibility. Whilst the first generation Sea Harrier is now a memory, its legacy lives on in the AV-8B Harrier II. But who today still flies these unique jets? Our story begins in the United Kingdom, with a Sea Harrier FRS-1, affectionately known as the Shah, first entered service with the Royal Navy in 1980. Developed from the Harrier GR3, it was specifically navalized, featuring a distinctive raised bubble canopy for enhanced visibility and an extended forward fuselage to house its Ferranti Blue Fox radar. Parts were also changed to use corrosive resistant alloys or coatings to protect against the harsh marine environment. Its primary role was to provide crucial air defence for Royal Navy task groups, a unique solution in an area dominated by larger supersonic fighters. The Sea Harrier's moments of destiny arrived swiftly. In 1982, during the Falklands War, these agile jets, operating from HMS Hermes and HMS Invincible, found themselves vastly outnumbered by the Argentine land-based aircraft. Despite facing a force nine times larger, the 26 Sea Harriers deployed achieved an astonishing feat. They destroyed 23 Argentine aircraft in air-to-air -air engagements, suffering not a single loss in air combat. This remarkable performance cemented the Sea Harrier's legendary status. Later, this performance was upgraded. The Sea Harrier FA-2, with a more advanced radar and AMRAM missile capability, was a formidable naval interceptor. In fact, for its time, its radar and missile combination was amongst the most deadly in the world. Yet by 2006, the UK had retired the fleet early, years before the arrival of its replacement, the F-35B Lightning II. India, the only other Sea Harrier operator, retired its upgraded fleet in 2016, replacing them with MiG-29Ks, the original Shah had roared for the last time. While the original Sea Harrier is gone, its successor, the AV-8B Harrier II, lives on, a bit burly. A product of UK-US collaboration, it debuted with the US Marine Corps in 1985. With a carbon composite airframe, better cockpit visibility and digital avionics, the AV-8B was a significant leap forward. It served in the Gulf War, Afghanistan, Iraq and Libya. But by 2025, only three nations remain as operators. The United States, Italy and Spain. And their time with the Harrier is also quickly running out. The United States Marine Corps is the largest Harrier operator, fielding around 39 AV-8Bs as of early 2025. These jets have played a key role in expeditionary warfare, able to launch from amphibious assault ships without catapults. But change is coming fast. By September 2026, the last Marine Harrier Squadron, VMA-223, will transition to the F-35B, a stealthy fifth-generation Stovall aircraft. Italy operates 14 AV-8B Harriers and a single trainer. These fly from the carrier Cavour, but not for much longer. The Italian Navy's transition is a prime example of this evolving landscape. While actively phasing out their Harriers, they have simultaneously been integrating F-35Bs onto their aircraft carrier, ITS Cavour. This dual platform capability allows for a flexible and robust naval air arm during this critical transition period. Indeed, the Italian Navy's air arm operates both the Harrier and the F-35B, participating in joint exercises with the French Navy in July 2025. Spain flies 12 AV-8Bs and one trainer from its light carrier, Juan Carlos I, and plans to keep its Harriers in service until 2030. But there's a twist. In August 2025, Spain formally abandoned its plan to acquire the F-35B. 
Instead, it is focusing on European air power initiatives like the Future Air Combat System and further integration of the Eurofighter Typhoon. Here's the problem. Neither program offer a Stovall variant. That means that when the AV-8Bs retire, Juan Carlos I will lose its fixed wing capability, potentially for a decade or more. No jets, no carrier strike. In anticipation of the significant fixed wing capability gap, the Spanish Navy is actively planning to integrate unmanned aerial vehicles aboard its carrier. A memorandum of understanding has been signed between the Spanish state-owned shipbuilder and Airbus to conduct a comprehensive study on the integration of the Airbus-developed SIRTAP system onto its carrier. SIRTAP is characterised as a high-end tactical UAV, primarily designed for intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance missions. Beyond the SIRTAP, Spain is reportedly exploring other large UAVs for various roles, including airborne early warning and anti-submarine warfare. So unless plans change, Spain will be the last nation to fly the Harrier, likely grappling with parts shortages and declining readiness as support contracts wind down. Let's be clear, no nation flies the original Sea Harrier today. India retired it in 2016. The Royal Navy ended operational use in 2006. What remains are second generation AV-8B variants, and even those are disappearing fast. By the end of 2026, the US and Italy will be fully transitioned to the F-35B. Spain will hold out until 2030, or until maintenance costs and spare parts make the decision for them. And then that day will come. The Harrier's remarkable era, from the Falklands to Fallujah, will finally close. The Harrier wasn't just a jet. It was a revolution in naval air power. From small decks and remote outposts, it proved that agility and innovation could outmatch numbers and brute force. The Sea Harrier earned its place in history during the Falklands War. A handful of jets defeating a larger number of land-based aircraft. The AV-8B carried that legacy forward across the last decade. But now its time is near. The Harrier, in its various iterations, has served with distinction for decades proving the immense value of VSTOL technology in naval aviation. As the last of these remarkable jump jets prepare for their final flights, we will witness the end of an era and the dawn of a new one, dominated by advanced fifth generation fighters like the F-35B. The future belongs to the F-35, a marvel of speed, stealth and integrated systems. Yet the Harrier's remarkable story serves as an important reminder. Sometimes the most unconventional and adaptable machines prove to be the most powerful. Its legacy, particularly the Sea Harrier's audacious triumphs, will forever be remembered in naval history. A testament to British ingenuity. What are your thoughts on the retirement of the Harrier? Should Spain have gone with the F-35B?